Hi there everybody, so today we're going to look at Venn diagrams, um, how they look, the notations and all those kind of things and how to sort data into those typical gripes groups. So a Venn diagram is literally um, a bunch of circles where overlaps represent both groups, okay? So if I actually put these numbers into a Venn diagram, all right, what we need to do is essentially put a big box um, and then obviously decide how we're going to split them. All right, so what we've got over here is anything that fits in the times table, the five times table into this box, and anything which is odd is going to go into sorry, this circle, and anything that goes as odd is going to go into this circle. All right, and anything that fits both criteria goes in the middle. Anything that fits doesn't fit either of those criteria goes on the outside. All right, this little swiggle over here just represents everything essentially, the older kind of data. So you might kind of see that represented somewhere on the line. Nothing to worry about, it just means it represents. Every, every part of the data. So I'm going to put the numbers in. So 10 is going to go into the five time table. It's certainly not odd. Okay. Three is going to go into the odd column, isn't it? All right, because it's odd. 15 is both in the five time table and odd. So it goes into the middle. And then a four, well, that doesn't go into any of those. So it kind of sits outside. All right. So that's essentially a Venn diagram. All right. And how I had to kind of put it together. Okay. So you just got two criteria or maybe three, um, but it tends to be two. And obviously, your overlap is what both happens, and then the bits in between. Okay, so if you're looking for highest common factor using Venn diagrams, um, and this is a bit of a skill more than anything else, then what you're going to do, you're going to draw a prime factor tree to do this. Okay, so prime factor tree in order to kind of split it up. So let's split it up using prime factor tree. Now, if you haven't done prime factor trees or not quite sure how to do that, then please look, please look at that lesson first of all. Um, but essentially, we're splitting split up to prime numbers. We're going to do the same for 36, which is going to give you these. And then we're going to literally put a Venn diagram together of those two, basically, numbers. All right, so you'll see 24 and 36. So basically, what I'm going to put in, anything that's common goes in the middle, and anything that's not common basically outside all right so you can see from here that in both cases there are two twos all right and a three so there's two twos and a three in both of these so they're going to go into the middle all right so here you see two twos in both so that's going to go in the middle you've got another two and a two so that's going to go in the middle and you've got another three that's going to go in the middle so they're common in both of them aren't they all right so the two two three go in the middle now i've got an extra two and the 24 so that's going to go over here and I've got an extra three that's going to go over there. All right. So what I've done is I've split the 24 and the 36 into its prime factors. And then I've put what's common in both in the middle. And then I've got the, the, the ones that are left into their own little circles outside. All right. So because I'm looking for the highest common factor, something that goes into both of them, then I'm looking at these. All right. So if I did two times two times three, that's going to be two times two, which is four times by three again it's 12 that is my highest common factor so 12 is my highest common factor of these particular numbers so it's a technique of, of understanding how to find the highest common factor um, with the Venn diagram essentially all right so that is going to be my highest common factor of 12 all right and can you do the same thing for lowest common multiple actually um, so if I do the same process for lowest common multiple let's just do this really really quickly so I've got this lot I'm going to set up my Venn diagram in exactly the same way. So I'm looking for what goes in the middle. So I've got the two twos in the middle there, and that's about it. And then I've got the two and the two there, and I've got the three and the five there. All right, so that kind of runs through doing what we've literally just done. Well, to find the lowest common multiple, um, literally at this particular time, I just times everything that I see in the circle. All right, everything that's seen in both these circles. So that times that times that times that, that times that times that. All right, all of it. Because what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to repeat these. Okay, so I'm not going to do these twice because they're already common both. So to find the lowest common multiple, just times all these ones that you see. All right, so I'll write all this down. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, and it's going to give me 240. So that is my lowest common multiple. So if I did my multiples of 60 all the way up, if I did my 16 multiples all the way up, Eventually, I'd find my lowest one that fits in both, and it's actually going to be 240. So it's going to be potentially an awful lot quicker um, when it gets a little bit more awkward to do something like this. All right. So you find out what's common in the middle. You find out what's not into each of those two little circles. And then the lowest common multiple, like I say, just times all the numbers that are in there together, and that's going to give you your answer. All right. So it's a very, very 
cool technique in terms of finding lowest common ball and highest common factor using Venn diagrams. All right. Well, of course, if you want to practice that, get yourself to the maths-school.website um, link at the bottom and there'll be some questions on there to have a go at. But thanks for listening.